Hey, uh, my name is Edgar Saktik. I'm the RA for 7th Floor Huntington, uh, and this is my story. Ooh, my favorite place to eat at. I definitely, this isn't a restaurant, but I would say my, my abuela's house, my abuela's place, I don't know, because she's just fire cooking. She's, both of them, both of them. One of them lives in Jersey, and the other one lives like around the corner from me, so that's fire. I love it. Well, let's see some of my hobbies uh well i just picked up rock climbing a few months ago so that's really fun that's like tough it's a different type of like sport that i'm used to because i've done soccer football track um but uh, the wrestling is super wrestling no i didn't ever do wrestling i did rock climbing um let's see other hobbies i don't know i i think that's about it really other than than going out evangelizing evangelizing and Rock climbing, that's, I guess, me. Uh, yeah, my favorite Bible verse. Let's see. So, I would say it's Hebrews 4.12. Uh, it's for we do not have a high priest, high priest that does not sympathize with us in our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted, yet without sin. Um, I would say that's it, because, like, I definitely like feel that Jesus is like with me in the weaknesses, like when when I'm just like like not feeling the best or even like fully there, even if it's like a worship session, it's like like spiritually I feel weak and he's like he's like I'm still there. Like, but like I'm not gonna believe in the creating distance. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't know, I like that. Alright, so today I'm gonna show you my story with you guys. Um so I grew up well, first off my family's from Guatemala. Um, all my family, so I'm the first generation here in America, um, and so we grew up, well, basically I grew up in my grandparents' house, also in my tia's house, um, and so we, like, lived in South Central, um, so most of my memories are there as a child, um, but once we got our own place, which was, like, an apartment in Hawthorne, uh, that's where, like, I actually, I don't know, gained consciousness, if that makes any sense, um, and so... Growing up in like South Central and Hawthorne, like that was like a big thing of just being surrounded by, I guess the hood, but I, I loved it because it was just like, I don't know, it felt like home. So it's like, I don't know, it felt like a really cool community just being tight. Uh, just knowing the same people every year was really cool. So I didn't move around a lot. Um, I grew up, born and raised in LA. So um, the only traveling that I got to do was only like later in life, which I'll get to. Um, and so, Growing up in Hawthorne, uh, I didn't grow up in like a, a religious or Christian home at all. My mom's Christian, my dad's Catholic, uh, but we would go to like masses, you know, like for holidays and stuff. So it wasn't like anything serious. Um, so I didn't grow up with like knowing Jesus or like about the Bible or about any like stories or like worship songs, Sunday school, like none of that. All that was new to me um, when I became a Christian, but um, grew up with that like by basis of like just do good, like be a good person, right? Um, and so I never really questioned like what I believed um, until I got into like middle school. And so seeing my mom as like the Christian figure in the household, my dad is a Catholic, so I wasn't really like looking at him at all. Um, I saw my mom as like the image of Christianity. And so like <clears throat> the more that I like, studied like, oh, what should I believe? Like what should, what should I put my faith in? Um, like I would see her and like she would always like be kind of like angry um, and stuff so that definitely affected me um, and how I viewed Christianity so I just saw like the flaws and the hypocrisy and so like that really like drove me away for uh, I'd say like three years like consistently like from like seventh grade to my freshman year uh, so seventh grade to eighth grade I was I grew up in public school seventh grade eighth grade I was still in public school um, in Hawthorne and so like not learning or knowing anything about Jesus, um, I'm doing things that I think is right in my own eyes, obviously. Um, and so my mom's like, mm, hold up. Like I started getting in trouble with her and like obeying and rebelling, rebelling against her. And so uh, she's like, oh snap, like this kid doesn't know like the God that I know. He doesn't know the Jesus that I know. And so she's like, let's start taking him to church. And so we started going to church every Sunday and every Thursday. And I hated it. Um, I was like very distant, like very like, oh, I'm being forced into religion. Like I don't want any of this. Um, and just started like hating Christianity more. 
um, because of her and also because of like having to listen to it every week. And so I was like, oh, I can't get away from these cheesy stuff. And so this is Mikey, by the way, my little pet. Um, and so going into my freshman year of high school, um, like I was already set on like, okay, I'm gonna go to this high school, um, like near my friends that I grew up with and we're gonna be super cool, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, but my mom was like, oh no, like you're getting in trouble way too much. Like you, I'm gonna make you go to this. I'm writing, like saying it in my own words, you know, cause like that's how I received it. Uh, but like, she's like, okay, I'm gonna put you in this private Christian school that's like 10 miles away from where your friends are, like you, where you grew up. Um, cause I don't want you to talk to those friends. I, I know they're a bad influence. So like, I'm gonna keep them away from you. And um, so I was like, I was like, like, okay. So I just rolled with it, hating now every day. And then every Sunday, I was just like going to this school, this private Christian school and, and hearing about the Bible so much and just getting irritated. So all I could do was to like distract myself. So diving into like football, soccer and track, uh, that was like literally my like only way to get out of like Jesus talk. Um, so I was like super against it in the sense of like, and the weird thing is, like, I never was like, there is no God. It was like, I didn't want to believe there was a God. I was more agnostic than anything. I was like, there's no way that there can be a God. Like, we can't know if he hasn't appeared to us, you know? And so, like, I was really against it and like, against Christianity and having any faith for real, like a solid faith. Um, and, like, being like that in a Christian school is kind of tough. Um, and so I started, like, like, realizing, like, my own attitude, seeing other people and how they, like, would would act and like the way they saw things I'm like this is a little different like that's not how I see things like this isn't how I was raised type of thing and so I would say that I was like a like a moral person I wasn't like ah, I like screw everything you know like an anarchist type of thing but I was like I, I relied on my own like righteousness I guess you could say um, and so freshman year finishes and then I I'm doing football for sophomore year um, and so my football coach he's instead of like actually playing football you know like we signed up for uh we're like doing these long bible studies and diving into the apologetics of the the history the prophecy the archaeology the science in the bible there's so much and the bible's so sound that like it blew my mind i could i literally couldn't do anything because that was my escape so i just like sat there and listened so i'm like oh like i got blown away and i was like dang so i started reading the bible more that throughout my sophomore football season and I just read more and more and more. I got to know God personally through that and looked into the apologetics of it. And I was like, dang, like, this is actually really sound. I don't know why I thought so much of, so much against it. And so I accepted Jesus my sophomore year of football. Um, and like that, that really changed my life. And as soon as like I gave my life to Christ, I went from being like this like self-righteous, prideful, like uh, addicted, very like... Um, What's the word i use it today it was oh depressed that was the word depressed person um into joyful and like truly knowing what joy was um that was only found through jesus and the only peace and rest that i had was in jesus um and that i finally felt like that peace um and so through once i got saved um my sophomore year i couldn't tell you a definitive date but i got saved for sure and i got set on fire he was like, you fought me for so long. I want you to fight for me. And so he put a fire in me to go and share the gospel. Um, and so every year um, now I've been a part of a Revive America, which is an evangelistic like 10 day mission trip uh, to like different parts of the U.S. Um, and now evangelism has become like part of my lifestyle and not just an outreach event. Um, and so every day ever since then, like God's been just like working in my heart more and more of like, let me show you what real love looks like, real freedom looks like. Um, and just like changing the way I look at things. Um, and now I'm just, I have a calling to be a missionary pastor and I have the best relationship with my mom that I've had in a long time. That's my story. A lot of, a lot of Christians like will have questions, but like kind of push it aside and like just have faith. Um, I definitely would say lean into those questions and dive deep into the reason for why you believe what you believe and don't just be like i grew up in this like this is just the truth like i just believe it um i was going evangelizing today and i was with this one guy his name was chase he's a freshman in high school i was like this like why are you why are you here and he was like oh i'm here for a grade because it was an assignment or whatever and so i'm like okay so then, but 
are you a Christian? And he's like, yeah, I'm a Christian. I was like, why are you a Christian? And he's like, well, I mean, I grew up, my family takes me to church. Like, I just like, you know, I, I learned this, like, this is, this is the gospel. It's like, it's, it's good news. I'm like, oh, snap, that's cool. But like, why do you believe it? Like, why does that make sense to you? Like, why do you just become a Christian? And he was like, I don't really, I don't really know. And so I would definitely say for those Christians that, or even agnostics that are like, is there a God? Can you know a God? There is a way. And if you dive in deep into the reasons uh, for your faith, it'll actually grow you stronger and not cause more doubt in you being like, oh, I don't trust God enough. It's actually going to make you stronger in your faith instead of, you know, creating a discord. You know, when we make it seem in our own head. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the... Yeah, no, Vanguard has definitely like helped me grow in my walk a ton because I'm a sophomore uh, now. Uh, but last year as a freshman, I was a commuter and I was working. Uh, and so like it took a lot of my time and I was very isolated going from high school to like having friends I got to see every day. I got to hang out with play sports with to like nada, just like straight work or like study. And I was like, it was really lonely to be honest. And so I had to fully depend on God. Um, and so being as a commuter and fully depending on God, it helped me prepare me for the second semester that was coming our freshman year. And so I started, uh, dorming on campus and I joined the track team. Uh, so I got a community, uh, that I was praying for all sem first semester. Uh, I got that community and like within months, like it was just insane amount of growth, like seeing like, like miracles happen, like people get their lives set free and knowing what like real grace, like real grace looks like. Um, and well, I think within like a third month of like dorming, I was like this at this little home basement church thing uh, that my friend was putting on. And it was like five of us and he had like this worship music going on. And it was just like really chill. It was low key, but it was like spirit filled. And so he was like, all right, Holy Spirit's here. So ask him for like an answer to a prayer you've had in your heart. And so as a freshman, it's like, what am I going to do with life? life? You know, like, what am I, why am I studying what I study? Um, and so I asked God, I was like, what should my major be? And so instead of answering the question, he was like a missionary pastor and he like seared it into my brain. I still remember it to this day. And I was like, whoa, just absolutely blown away that he could speak so very clearly into my mind. Um, I wasn't like coerced in, in any sense to, to think that, but it was like, like God like literally spoke to me so vividly through an intimate, like small group that it wasn't like I was at a church and I was praising God and I finally heard the words. It was like in, in the stillness, you know, in a quiet little setting. Um, and Vanguard's just helped me be like, yeah, we're a small school, but you know, we got the Holy Spirit here and he speaks to us. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's, let's just chase after him.